Dear colleagues from Japanese Geopark Network, dear friends, I'm very pleased to be with you at this moment and to provide you few explanations on a complex subject related with UNESCO Geopark and the sale of geological objects. To understand better this relation, I think that the best should be to come back in the Geopark history and on the origin of Geopark concepts. The main founder of the Geopark concept were previously in the years 80s major players at the international level deeply involved in taking into account the protection of geological side. It was a new, long and difficult fight. At the European level, France has played a pioneering role since 1978 by modifying its legislation to allow the creation of geological reserves. In 1984, the Geological Reserve of Haute Provence was created in the South France, a geological reserve covering 2,000 square kilometers, which was the first and largest protected territory in Europe under geology. At that time, the trade in mineral and fossil was flourishing and thousands of geological sites were regularly looted. In 1987, a team of Italian fossil looters was arrested within this geological reserve in Haute-Provence. Arrest which gave rise to a widely publicized trial at national and international level. Media coverage that led for the public to an understanding and acceptance of the need to protect geological sites. I would like now to invite you to watch a short news of this historical event diffused on French national television in 1987. À Digne, dans les Alpes de Haute-Provence, on juge aujourd'hui quatre touristes italiens coupables d'avoir volé des fossiles dans une réserve géologique. François Chemel. Les quatre touristes italiens avaient été surpris en flagrant délit de pillage de fossiles dans une réserve géologique de Haute-Provence, non loin de Digne. Une réserve protégée par la loi de 1976 sur les sites classés. Dans leur voiture, les gendarmes avaient retrouvé tout le matériel des chasseurs de fossiles professionnels, pieds de biche, burins, marteaux et pioches, et sur leur lieu de camping, plus de 550 fossiles, l'équivalent d'une tonne et demie de roches, un butin estimé à plus de 120 000 francs. Aujourd'hui, et pour la première fois en France, des voleurs de fossiles se retrouvent au banc des accusés. Les quatre collectionneurs encourent une amende entre 2 000 et 60 000 francs. Une somme jugée dérisoire par les spécialistes de la réserve. Mais pour Guy Martini, directeur de la réserve géologique de Haute-Provence, l'enjeu de ce procès est plus important. Euh, je crois qu'on peut être en droit d'espérer que, grâce notamment à ce procès, les choses vont quelque peu changer. Nous espérons arriver à affirmer que le patrimoine géologique est un des patrimoines nationaux et que jusqu'à présent il a été oublié et qu'il est temps maintenant de, de s'en préoccuper. Et nous espérons également, toujours grâce à ce procès, arriver à avoir un début de support législatif pour intervenir sur des problèmes de pillage importants euh, intervenant sur des sites d'intérêt majeur. Après plusieurs millions d'années d'un sommeil jusqu'alors ininterrompu, ce magnifique poisson fossile retrouvera-t-il enfin la paix Thanks to the impact of this media coverage, societal awareness began to emerge leading in 1991 to the organization in this geological reserve of the first international symposium on the protection of geological sites. At the end of this symposium, the International Declaration of the Right of the Memory of the Earth was adopted. Declaration in which is the founding first basis of the geoparks and which defines, for the first time, the heritage value of geology. From this declaration, the term geological heritage is adopted internationally. To stay in the history, I invite you again to watch another video on this uh, founding event presented on French national news. 
À Digne, dans les Alpes de Haute-Provence, se tient depuis 48 heures un symposium international, le premier du genre, sur la protection du patrimoine géologique, autrement dit des fossiles. Et jusqu'à lundi prochain, une centaine de scientifiques venus du monde entier vont réfléchir ensemble pour tenter de trouver des solutions les meilleures possibles pour protéger ce qu'il est convenu d'appeler la mémoire de la Terre. Serge Dupuy, Henri Lelièvre. Un symposium à deux pas de la célèbre dalle à ammonite d'animaux disparus il y a environ 185 millions d'années et fossilisé sur cet ancien fond sous-marin, une pièce unique au monde qui a probablement donné l'idée aux responsables de l'UNESCO d'organiser cette première rencontre. Sujet longuement abordé hier, les critères de sélection des sites et le pillage géologique qui représente une valeur marchande et que les géologues veulent éviter. Pour cela, ils ont souhaité la mise en place d'une structure juridique permettant de réglementer la vente des fossiles. Des scientifiques qui se sont bien sûr penchés sur le problème du patrimoine géologique. Il nous a semblé important que pour la première fois, on arrive à écrire un texte qui puisse expliquer simplement ce qu'est le patrimoine géologique au public et ce, quelle que soit la nationalité du public concerné. Donc on a tous mené une réflexion sur la réelle signification de notre travail. Et en fait, on s'est aperçu, mais ce que certains savaient déjà heureusement, c'est que protéger le patrimoine géologique, c'est plus qu'un acte scientifique, c'est travailler sur la mémoire de la Terre. Un point sur lequel les spécialistes des 30 pays représentés dans la salle de réunion ont décidé d'élaborer un texte, tout comme sur l'harmonisation d'approche de chaque nation par rapport à la reconnaissance du patrimoine national et à sa protection. From this date, international awareness of the importance of geological heritage and the need to prohibit the sale of geological ob objects, a source of looting and disappearance of geological sites, has developed. The geopark concept took shape in 1996 and the first geoparks were created in Europe in 2000 under the auspices of UNESCO. You know, of course, Since that date, the evolution of Geopark until today, we have a significant debt not to forget in 2015, the enthusiastic adoption by the 193 member state of UNESCO of Geopark, such as a full-fledged UNESCO program and the transformation of existing Geopark into UNESCO Geoparks. The guideline established for the creation of UNESCO Geopark include out of eight articles, one specially devoted to the problem of the sale of geological objects. A text that we are looking at this moment in the video. At the same time, a UNESCO Global Geopark should be used as leverage for promoting the protection of geological heritage locally and nationally. The management body must not participate directly in the sale of geological objects such as fossils, mineral, polished rocks and ornamental rocks of the type normally found in so-called rock shop within the UNESCO Global Geopark and should actively discourage unsustainable trade in geological material. The protection of geological heritage and the ban on the sale of geological objects are closely linked. It's contradictory to conceive and explain that a geological site memory of the earth must be protected and on the other hand to promote museum or stores in which geological pieces are sold. As specified in the UNESCO guidelines, a UNESCO Global Geopark should be used as leverage for promoting the protection of geological heritage locally and nationally. It is obvious that if the trade in geological object is authorized by national legislation, the UNESCO Geopark cannot prohibit this type of trade on its territory. In this case, the UNESCO Geopark must develop certain actions. 
for example, establish an open dialogue with dealers in geological objects and try to find an alternative economic system. In many cases, training in casting techniques and substituting the sales of original fossil with high quality casting has yielded excellent results. In any case, the UNESCO Geopark can not promote or associate with person or establishment engaged in the sale of geological objects. These people cannot be part of the UNESCO Geopark management structure and cannot benefit from any publicity or relationship with UNESCO Geoparks. They cannot appear in any Geopark promotional document. In the event that in a UNESCO Geopark, a private museum without any relationship with the UNESCO Geopark proceeds to the sale of geological objects in accordance with national legislation, various actions can be considered. First, check that this establishment has no link with the UNESCO Geopark and that in no case this establishment is present in the promotional, promotional documents of the UNESCO Geopark in its website, leaflets and so on. Check that this establishment does not use the name of the UNESCO Geopark to develop its own advertising and promote itself. But more important is to create a dialogue with the owner of this establishment to explain to him the conceptual incompatibility of his activity with the mission of conservation of the territory in which he is located. The search for alternative economic solution allowing the owner to make the decision to transform his business can be very useful and like the cast sale that we talked uh, already before. In some cases, the owner of the establishment does not own the land and rent his right of occupancy to the owner of the land, which sometimes is a municipality. If this municipality is one of the constituent municipality of the UNESCO Geopark, it should intervene for a lease renewal of the establishment by including in the rental constraint the non-presence of a shop selling geological objects. Despite all these efforts, it's uh, sometimes and uh, unfortunately possible that uh, a solution cannot be legally found. In this case, the UNESCO Geopark will have to demonstrate to the UNESCO Global Geopark Council that it has made every effort and uh, experience to try to resolve this problem. In a very rare case, and as indicated in uh, Article 7 of the UNESCO Geopark guidelines, and I am reading, were clearly justified as a responsible activity and as a part of delivering the most effective and sustainable means of site management, it may permit sustainable collective of geological material for scientific and educational purpose from naturally renewable sea sites within the UNESCO Global Geopark. Trade of geological material based on a such a system may be tolerated in exceptional circumstances, provided it is clearly and publicly explained, justified and monitored as the best option for the Global Geopark in relation to local circumstances. Such circumstances will be subject to approval by the UNESCO Global Geopark Council on a case-by-case -case basis. This uh, essentially concerns local and historical practice for the sales of theological material, such, for example, as the sales of uh, Pentacrine fossil in jewelry, which is an existing practice since the end of the 19th century in the UNESCO Geopark of Haute Provence in France.
L'histoire de l'étoile de Saint-Vincent remonte loin. La pantacrine, un animal de la famille des oursins, vivait dans les mers il y a 200 millions d'années et plus. Des articles isolés en forme d'étoile à cinq branches constituent la tige de l'animal. Ces articles qu'on appellera bien plus tard les étoiles de Saint-Vincent. Ce célèbre fossile est très présent autour de Digne sur le territoire du géoparc. Il a été perçu différemment au fil des ans, objet d'études pour les géologues, talisman pour les bergers, bijoux pour les artisans. C'est au début du 19e siècle qu'un bijoutier dinois, Antoine Colombe, décide d'utiliser ce fossile pour la conception de bijoux. Jusqu'au milieu du 20e siècle, la production est continue, bagues, bracelets, colliers, mais aussi peignes, broches ou boîtes. Dans les années 1960, quasiment toute la fabrication des étoiles de Saint-Vincent s'arrête pour reprendre voilà trois ans. All the manufacture of objects from quarry waste as in the UNESCO Geopark Geomon in the United Kingdom. In the case of historical practice, an explanatory and detailed dossier must be established and presented to the decision of the UNESCO Global Geopark Council. I hope that uh, now you have more elements to understand the importance of the problem of uh, sales from a geological object within UNESCO Geopark. I would like now and in conclusion to congratulate you, congratulate the whole UNESCO Geopark Japanese Network for its excellent work and its great contribution and participation within the global geopark network and the development of UNESCO Geopark in Japan and in the world. I wish you a fruitful meeting and thank you very much for your attention.